Wondering how the final year hospital stay for the doctor of pharmacy student really is like or what it actually entails? Well, then stay tuned to the end of this video because in this video, I'm going to share with you the exact details on what it takes or what the final year hospital stay is actually like. Hi, I'm Mehoni Obed, a recent graduate of the Doctor of Pharmacy program in Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology here in Ghana, and I like to share my experiences. If you are new here or you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly click the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And as I said, I like sharing my experiences, hence, if you want any information or you want to know more about the FAMD program, then this is the best channel that you will need to subscribe to. Don't leave this video without subscribing. Also, if you have any questions concerning the Doctor of Pharmacy program or you have any questions about my own experiences, comment it down below and I'll do all to answer them for you. Make sure you watch to the end of this video because at the end, I'm going to share some few tips that will help you ace your final year in this program the final year hospital stay is what we refer to as the advanced pharmacy practice experiential training where final year students of the doctor of pharmacy program are stationed at various hospitals across the country to gain practical knowledge or to put into practice the knowledge they've acquired over the past five years when they were in school basically the training involves students undergoing six different rotations within six different units in the hospital so every student is supposed to do five compulsory rotations then we have one elective so you are supposed to select one elective out of four options there are four options for you to choose one from and these four options include hiv tb there is mental health there is oncology and there is ear nose and throat so among these four you are supposed to choose one together with the five compulsory that you are going to offer the five core rotations are one internal medicine two maternal health three accidents and emergency four child health five surgery so you do these five and finally you add on the elective of your choice the elective that you choose will depend on two factors. The main factor being the hospital where you are stationed. It's not every hospital that has these four different units in there. So depending on where you find yourself, you are supposed to choose the particular unit or the particular rotation that is available within that hospital that you are. For instance, if you happen to be in a hospital where only HIV TB is available, then it means you can't do the other elective. So strictly, you would have to stick to the HIV TB rotation. However, if you happen to be in a facility where all the four units are available, then you have the choice to choose between these four electives. So that brings me to option two. Option two will depend on your own interest. So these are the four electives that I've mentioned. Once again, they are HIV, TB, Oncology, Mental Health, and ENT, that's Ear, Nose, and Throat. So depending on which of these four that you think you would like to be there or would like to experience, then you choose amongst them. For the core rotations, as I mentioned earlier, internal medicine involves the general practice of medicine uh, as pertaining to teenagers and adults alike in a medical world. So you have medical staff there with you to help you with your training together with your preceptors and you treat general conditions like diabetes, hypertension, renal failure, all those common conditions that you hear about and some uncommon conditions that you only find in peculiar cases. Second rotation which I mentioned was maternal health which involves ops and gynae that's obstetrics and gynecology so cases with pregnancy and cases that has to do with the female reproductive system so over there to you meet cases like preeclampsia gestational diabetes a whole lot concerning pregnancy 
and other gynecological problems, abortion and the likes. The next rotation I mentioned was accident and emergency. As the name suggests, accident and emergency. So you'll be stationed to an A&E unit and that place is where various accident victims are brought in. So you see cases including trauma and emergency conditions like diabetic ketoacidosis, hypertension agencies and emergencies and a whole lot of other emergencies that you are likely to find on any a and &E unit then child health so child health is more like internal medicine but rather in children so that is where you would need to pay attention to conditions that children present with so for instance meningitis malaria severe malaria in some cases and every other condition that children are likely to present with so you work with children from all ages from the new needs up to maybe up to like 12 years conditions in these children you are going to be dealing with it when you are stationed at child health finally we have surgery as the last but not the least core rotation that you are going to intake and as the name implies surgery you are going to be stationed at a surgical ward and surgery contains and those a lot of other things you have a lot of surgical wounds but depending on where you find yourself doing the rotation it may either limit or broaden your knowledge in surgery so over there too you are going to meet surgical cases like benign prostatic hyperplasia you are going to meet cases like humorous hernia and the like so more of the surgical cases but you your practice there will be to learn and appreciate some of the things that are done before surgery, after surgery or during surgery in terms of the medications and their use. During each rotation on a regular basis, we are expected to come to work from morning 8 a.m. to either 2 or 4 depending on the hospital that you find yourself. And when you come to work, you're expected to be on the ward and experience the clinical practice on the ward. That's the essence of the FAMD program. So you won't be stationed in the hospital where you only work in the dispensary, but rather you'd also offer your services and you also get to learn on the ward where you meet other clinical practitioners. Also, you're expected to attend various clinical meetings and these clinical meetings could be meetings that just the units that you happen to be in has set up or the whole hospital or just a pharmacy department or every clinical team is involved so any sort of these meetings you are supposed to attend to acquire knowledge in some situations like when the pharmacy department organizes some of these clinical meetings it may be you the students who will be asked to come and do a presentation probably on a case that you have selected or on a selected topic that your preceptor has given you to do a presentation on. Also, you are expected to assist in the dispensary. As I mentioned earlier, mainly you are supposed to be stationed in the ward and learn what actually happens in the ward. But on the other hand, you are also expected to offer your services in the dispensary because hospital pharmacy practice entails both the dispensary work and the uh, ward work. Now let's zoom into what actually goes on in the ward. When you go to the ward, what are you expected to do? One, you're expected to partake in ward rounds. So depending on the ward you find yourself and the schedule that is there, you may be having regular ward rounds or scheduled ward rounds. So for instance, there are general ward rounds where you go every week. So let's say every Monday there is a team going for ward round. You're expected to be part of that team with the help of your preceptor to learn and also to appreciate the things that are done on the world. Another important thing that you would be expected to do is to conduct what we refer to as medication reconciliation. And what we mean by medication reconciliation is that almost every day or on a regular basis when you go, you will be assigned to patients and for such patients, you are supposed to always take account of the medications that they are taking you look at their treatment sheet as in what where the nurses will indicate the medications that they are being administered on to the patient so you compare these charts with the medications that a patient is supposed to take as in what the doctor has requested and also what the patient has on their bedside 
so you check the patient's folder you check the charts the vital signs and you compare and see whether the patient is actually receiving the right medications is receiving the right doses and every other thing about that that you've already been taught so that is simply medication reconciliation and making sure that indeed they are administering the exact amount that is supposed to be administered and the patient has actually taken it and not just hidden it anywhere another thing that you're expected to do is to document any interventions that you make with the help of your preceptor so as you practice or as you undertake any sort of rotation with time you gain experience as i said earlier you are going to spend about six weeks per rotation let's say for your first two weeks you may not be acquiring the knowledge there of hands you may not know much but after your two weeks four weeks by the time you are in your fifth and sixth week you have acquired much knowledge to be able to contribute during such clinical rotations or uh, when you go on the ward by yourself You'll be able to identify some interventions and with the help of your preceptor once these interventions are accepted or even when they are not accepted once there is an intervention which makes sense that your preceptor agrees to then you have to document so you're expected to document any sort of intervention that you do and it depends on the facility that you find yourself some have a electronic system to document such uh, interventions whilst others use the paper system so you would be given a certain sheet a documentation form where you would write down the interventions that you make with the help of your preceptor another important thing that you need to do is follow up on patients so you may be assigned to specific patients or you may pick your own cases the patients as the, you pick a patient's case that you are going to profile and submit to school for your assessment so once you have selected such a patient or a patient has been assigned to you then it is your duty to follow up every now and then on the patient especially when they are on the ward to ensure that they are receiving the care that they need and this is what we refer to as pharmaceutical care so you are going to offer pharmaceutical care good pharmaceutical care to your patients and hence this will make you accountable to your patient and your preceptors as well and ensure that your patient receive the right medications and gets better quickly another important thing that you need to learn is how to collaborate effectively with the other healthcare team so as you are stationed on the wall you are not going to be there alone you are definitely going to work with other health practitioners so one you need to know how to communicate with them it is very important i i hope to dive further into this in a separate video but it's very important on how to conduct yourself on the world and how to interact with other health practitioners so that anytime you make any sort of intervention they see it's necessary or they will add they, they will see it as important and appreciate your efforts on the world also depending on the facility where you find yourself some preceptors may ask you to do bedside presentation what we mean by bedside presentation is that you'll be asked to stand by your patient pick the patient's profile the patient's folder and present the case and any sort of interventions that is necessary for that patient so for instance you go around with your preceptors on a regular basis and when you get to the patient that you've been assigned to you just pick the patient's folder then you start telling the case you start telling the case how it is so you'll be taught how to present a patient case or you learn this by following up doing finally you may be assigned to do different things by different preceptors depending on what they feel comfortable about so these are general things that you you are likely to do on the world and as i keep saying it depends on where you find yourself during the final year but any preceptor too can assign you to a particular thing that you will do in addition to all these that i have already listed after you've gone through all these six rotations six weeks per each how are you going to be assessed that is one thing that you need to pay particular attention to you are still in school you are in your final year and definitely before you end the year there is going to be some sort of assessment or the school has to grade you in a particular way so let's look at how you are going to be graded it is in three folds one you are going to use your 
patient case profile that's from the presentations and also you are going to submit the work to school so you are using the super approach you are going to present your case in that order and you submit to your preceptor first your preceptors will go through it make necessary corrections you're actually going to present it in some cases and finally when they've handed it back to you and you've done the necessary corrections you are then going to submit it back to school where school the lecturers or the preceptors will mark this work and give you marks that will be used to grade you finally also your preceptors are going to assess you based on the presentations that you do and some others too will assess you based on your attendance so make sure you are available as and when you need to be in the hospital then the your contributions at work too may be considered so one you do the super presentation to your preceptors will assess you then finally you write a final exams in school so after these six rotations you go back to campus to write a final exam which will be exams in all the six rotations and each of these rotations is five credits so you are going to combine the results that you get for all the three forms of assessment that's the SOPO, your preceptors assessment and the final exams that you write and all these things will be used to grade you before i conclude as i promised to share some tips for you to ace your final year rotations here it is one before you begin any rotation at all make sure you speak to some of your senior colleagues who have already done it especially those who did it in that same facility or even some of your own colleagues who have already done a particular rotation make sure you get to know what is expected of you in that particular unit or that particular rotation that you are going to go into so that you prime yourself before you get there and this will make it more easier for you if you happen to get into a rotation without having any prior knowledge what to expect is very daunting and i don't want you to find yourself in such a situation so make sure you make all the necessary inquiries before you start the rotation number two make sure you go through the topics that are indicated in your manual or your guide that you'll be given so for every rotation there is a list of topics that you need to go through during your program or during the rotation so make sure during your rotation you would find cases related to these things because mostly the final lesson would be about the topics that are listed in the manual so do all to read on them read on them as in in books from books then also on the wall try to identify cases that are in line with these topics and learn the practicality around it finally make sure you go to the world with a jota so that any new thing that you come across or anything that you don't understand you'll put it down and do further reading on it i hope these points will help you ace your final rotation and thanks for watching this video to the end if you enjoyed this video give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to do so in case you have any questions leave them in the comment section below and i will be glad to answer them check out my other videos on the doctor of pharmacy program to get a broader knowledge about the whole program and i'll see you in the next video thanks bye